So I'm going to assume that uh, some of you have heard of this podcast called The F Plus. What the fuck is that? Well, hang on, hang on. Because, uh... <laughs> You're welcome to leave. I mean, to be fair, they could have said WTF. <laughs> All right, um, but uh, some of you are familiar with the podcast. I will say that uh, these two people right here uh, are unfamiliar with the podcast, and more importantly, they're still fucking here! <laughs> we'll spare you the one of us chant. But there's another terrific podcast that exists on the internet, and it is called I Don't Even Own a Television. Yeah! This is a uh, terrific, terrific show run by J.W. Friedman and Chris Collision. And the moment that I was on that show, my immediate thought is, there's, uh, why don't I hang out with these guys? Like, this is exactly the kind of guys that I hang out with. And so we're going to bring up Chris Collision up here to the stage. Yeah. Chris Collision has told me exactly nothing about what will happen <laughs> in his reading. And so I'm as scared as you are. Chris Collision! Yeah. Scream for me, Minneapolis! Uh, so yeah, let's uh, start with a little bit of context. Um, the piece I'm going to be reading comes from what I think is inarguably the most influential, beautiful, uh, and inspiring piece of mass market speculative fiction ever. Uh, the designs, you can't say enough about them. They're sleek, they're compelling, they were imbued with a classical elegance that brought the future vividly to life. And, uh, Kind of came with a tantalizing sense of, of attainability. The vision was optimistic. Uh, it showed us that a much, much better world could be ours. Uh, all we have to do is hold ourselves to the standards that we claim to have. And the characters, you can't say enough about the characters. The characters were thrilling. They were ambitious, passionate people. And they were brought unforgettably to life uh, by actors as, as talented and charismatic as, as they were sexually uh, compelling. So, obviously, I'm talking about Star Trek. Wait for it. Wait for it. Voyager. Can I, can I have my high five back? Yeah, yeah thanks. So, uh, this story is called The Worst Days, colon, part one. It's not clear to me that there are uh, parts after part one. It was something over 20,000 words long when I encountered it. I feel sorry for you. Me too. Um, I've, had to, I've had to cut it down pretty considerably. Um, so you're going to notice some jarring transitions. Uh, there's going to be some dropped threads. Uh, there's three main parts. They don't have anything to do with one another, and it ends with a really, really dumb cliffhanger. Yeah, but wait till you start cutting it. But also, I edited it down a bunch. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, so everything here is somebody else, not me. This story takes place in the beginning of the seventh season. Cup couple of months after Unimatix Zero, and about a year into my own story, called Colin. Talon. The screenplay of Talon takes place 20 years later, comma, than this story. The Worst Days, Part 1, NC-17, written in May, July, 01, by Jared E. Smith, whose email address is chris underscore edlund at space.com. Why, thank you. <laughs> Planet, Axion 2. A long line of people chained to each other are walking toward an enormous mountain in the east. They are of different age, sex, and species, pasting hard 
dash crossed terrain on their way to what the inhabitants are calling Merska. Hell. <laughs> Hell. Where they are going to work in the mines until they die. Centurion guards are making sure that their new prisoners are walking along kindly. <laughs> Among the new prisoners is a human named Colin Chakotay. Oh. Chapter One, oh. Prisoners. <laughs> Janeway rushed through the crowded streets of the capital city, her heart pounding in her ears and the sounds of the pursuing centurions close behind her. She turned sharply into an alleyway between two tall buildings, ignoring the yells of protest from the street vendors. Pausing for a moment at the end of the alley, she leans against the wall, panting. So we've just vaulted into the present. <laughs> Checking her phaser charge, she fires a few shots into her pursuers before continuing her flight. Suddenly, Janeway stops when she sees a centurion pasting, blocking the only escape path. Cap Captain... Catherine Janeway's, plural, eyes, plural, darkens, plural. <laughs> she is noticing a stick on the ground. She picks it up, and with a steady grip, she rushes toward the centurion, who noticed nothing. When Janeway is close enough, she takes a swing, hitting the centurion hard, making his golden helmet fall off. The big man hit the ground with a hard thud. <laughs> she drops the stick, leans over to pick up the centurion's riffle when another centurion comes up behind her. He raises his riffle and hits Catherine on the backside of head, knocking her out. <laughs> Sorry. When she is beginning to wake up, she... <laughs> She is noticing that she is being carried away by two centurions. She can see and hear the people of the city. They are disappointed and calling her names. <laughs> I hope that you will die, comma, a slow death earthling, roars a civilian. <laughs> Voyager, what a help, grunts another. <laughs> Janeway is trying to cut loose from the two centurions that are holding her between them. One of the them are opening a cage on a transport vehicle. He pushes Catherine Janeway inside, then he locks the cage door. Now, Catherine knows how it must feel to be an animal when it has been captured. She is trying to open the lock on the door, but it gives her a shock. After an hour, they have arrived. The cage that Janeway is locked up in is falling apart when the centurions have parked. Catherine takes this opportunity to try to escape, but it fails when the centurion that is waiting grabs her neck and pushes her around. Catherine managed to escape from the evil lord that rules the planet a few days ago, and now she is brought back. Lord Namro Gekler, colon, a ruthless man who reminds of a chinese, that's chins with an E, <laughs> A ruthless man who reminds of a Chinese emperor <laughs> with big eyes, long black hair, and dressed in animal skin pants, jacket, and a thicker harness of Mardric skin. A Mardric is a bull liked animal. <laughs> Bulls like him. Namro is smiling when his centurions are dragging Janeway up to him and forcing her to bend down on her knees. The mean man is walking down to her from his throne. <laughs> Captain Janeway is looking up at him. This is the way that he wants it. He wants the people to look up to him in fear. In fear. I forget how we were saying this. Scene change. <laughs> It's gonna get a little bad. I brought a prop. Dude. You may need a sick bag. <laughs> Regarding your crew, the females, the Klingons. 
Centurion, what time is it? Three verks on past Jurdson, my lord. The Centurion answers, parentheses, 1445. Hmm. Either she is tortured for information or my centurions are having fun with her. No. Having fun? Janeway's plural eyes darkens. <laughs> Gakur is walking towards a great door on the west side. The centurions are dragging Janeway along. It's a really high-quality door. Fantastic door. <laughs> Doors go. In Inside, they are stooping. <laughs> they are standing on a balcony with armored glass. Below them are a huge room <laughs> with some tables, sofas, and a few mattresses. Uh, quick break. I had read this like four times, pity me, before I finally realized that mattresses, it's mattresses. <laughs> Just angry dresses. Right, yeah. As, 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 as I was, so you are. As, as you are, so I will be. Anyway. Five centurions are in the room laughing out loud. A door on the other side of the room slides open and someone enters. Path <laughs> Catherine Janeway can only see that it is a woman who is naked. Oh. Balana, no! Janeway cries, pounding the glass. Then she turns around, facing the Lord. <laughs> she hits him over the face with a flat hand. <laughs> you, you bastard, how can you do this to her? Gakur is grabbing the captain around her shoulders. He is leaning forward, speaking softly into her left ear. <laughs> this could happen to you, Toe, dot, 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 <laughs> unless you cooperate with me. And if you hit me again, I'll kill you. <laughs> Catherine Janeway is closing her eyes. Then she agrees with him. All right, jerk. <laughs> Have it your way. Just stop. Scene change. Janeway is closing her eyes. She doesn't want to do this. But she has no choice. If she doesn't, her crew will die. Nadria is letting her gown fall. She is completely naked in front of Catherine. The girl kisses Janeway on the lips. She kisses back. Nadria helps Catherine of with the red gown. Then she is laying her down, kissing her more and more intimate, doing so for about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the girl slowly crawls down to Catherine's breasts and begins to suck gently on the nipples. Janeway is, after a few minutes, starting to breathe heavily. Working her way down, Nadria is kissing the belly, then the legs, and finally, the hypogastria. What? Which is somewhere around here. I asked a doctor. Till... Nadria is kissing the belly, then the legs, and finally the hypogastrium. You know, like, you do. Till her partner starts to clatter. <laughs> Ladies, the more Catherine is clattering, the, the more intense the girl is working with her tongue, T-U-N-G. While working, she injects a shot into Catherine. 
Until Catherine is almost screaming when she comes. When done, John Dunn, capital D U N N E. She kisses Catherine again, then it's her turn. Kathy kisses the girl gently over her neck and breast while caressing her hypogastrium. The girl, the girl is twisting and turning when she comes. When finished, they are laying snuggling for a few hours. The next morning, Janeway is standing on the balcony, admires the view of the city when Nadria comes up to her. Janeway is looking at her, comma, smiling. Na Nadria is putting her arms around Janeway's plural waist. <laughs> what are you thinking about? I'm, I'm gonna cut. It's gonna make even less sense than normal, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting the shut the fuck up signal. So here's a bad guy you've never heard of, but I read the thing and I'm not sure I'd ever heard of him before either. This is the bad guy's little monologue. The climactic scene of the fuck ever this was going <laughs> um, No, 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 don't fucking go back, just fucking read it. The worst days, colon one. The Voyager, colon, must be destroyed now or my life is in deep trouble, Lador mumbles when he is hurrying down the small stairs to the basement. There he is opening a door to a small room. Inside there are many riffles and sticks lying on shelves. <laughs> he grabs a riffle, then he is hurrying into another room where he picks up some explosives. Afterwards, the Argonian is running to his ship that is waiting for him in the backyard. At the same time, the humans along with the Axians are fighting as bravely as they can. It's not easy when you're outnumbered, when the situation seems like it can't get any better. It looks like it's gonna be worth. A gigantic shadow is swooping over the city. Janeway is checking her phaser colon empty. She is checking the others as well. They are almost on empty toe. Catherine is turning to Chakotay. Well, my Indian friend, it looks like our journey ends here. <laughs> and my journey ends here. Chris Collision. Chris Collision! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.